when you supplement vitamin D, in your book you also mention uh, the importance of calcium, vitamin A, ma magnesium. How important is it to, to not forget about some of those as you're trying to, to balance your vitamin D levels? So as I was, uh, as I was uh, <clears throat> learning about vitamin D, it became clear that there are a number of complementary nutrients. Okay, and you can think about this at the vitamin D receptor. Now this isn't gonna be some technical discussion, but when vitamin D binds to its receptor, it binds in conjunction with another receptor called the vitamin A receptor, our XR receptor. So vitamin A and D are, are very closely linked partners. They do almost everything together, mm -hmm. okay? So that tells you something about what other nutrient you might need. You probably need vitamin A for vitamin D to work optimally. In contrast, too much vitamin A will inactivate vitamin D. So you don't want too much vitamin A, but you want enough. Now, where does the vitamin A come from? Vitamin A comes in nature. Again, this is using nature as your guide to understanding the biology. Vitamin A comes from vegetable matter, okay? So plant matter is where um, a lot of vitamin D comes from, or organ meat from animals, liver, kidney, these sorts of things. But so plant matter is loaded with vitamin A. Um, and so what else might be in plant matter that might enhance vitamin D function? Well, it turns out that when we looked at studies, um, uh, older studies on rickets, and there are actually some newer ones, it became clear that when kids were deficient in magnesium, um, it took a lot more vitamin D to correct their rickets than if they were replete with magnesium. So magnesium deficiency makes you resistant to vitamin D. So, and where does magnesium come from in our diet? Green leafy vegetables again, okay? So magnesium is the mineral that, are, that is required for chlorophyll to work. No chlorophyll, no plant life, no plant life, no animal mm -hmm. life, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you eat chlorophyll, plant matter, or, or supplements based on real foods, you're getting magnesium in a chelated form. It's chelated to what? Chlorophyll, the protein chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. And so it's much better absorbed in that form that was nature's intention. And so magnesium enhances vitamin D function. Vitamin A enhances vitamin D function, but not too much A. And the type of A you're getting from plants is what? Carotenes, right? Mm -hmm. All the different types of carotenes, which are safer forms of vitamin D than, ret than retinol, which is an activated form of vitamin A, which can be toxic and, and adversely affects vitamin D function. So <clears throat> you want retinoids um, uh, in the form of carotenoids. You want magnesium. And then there's another thing in plants, folic acid. And we've learned recently that folic acid, through epigenetic mechanisms, um, uh, alters the function of uh, uh, vitamin D enzymes, the one that activates the, 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 pro, the pre hormone to the active hormone, and the enzyme, it depresses the one that inactivates vitamin D. Mm. So when you have plenty of folic acid around, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna be easier for you to activate your vitamin D and it will hang around a little longer before it's deactivated in the presence of folic acid. So, and where does folic acid come from? It's like a broken record here, <laughs> green leafy vegetables again. So th this is how mother nature is telling you, look, these things are really important. There's all these micronutrients that come here and they're all enhancing the effect of something else, in this case, vitamin D. And so you really want your lifestyle to be a reflection of getting all of these mm -hmm. things if you want to optimize vitamin D function. So if we have to, and, and a lot of us will have to supplement vitamin D, that's where the diet part comes in because those two will interact. So the diet and the supplement will, will help Correct. us get to the optimum. Which, right. So that's why I talk about in the book this, um, some of it's an acid-base equation, and that gives you a way of thinking about it um, that you can actually calculate things. But the idea is to get a lot of vegetable matter to complement mm -hmm. the lean protein and then make sure your vitamin D levels are normal. Um, uh, and it's the vegetable matter in this diet that is complementing the function of, of vitamin D. But you can also look at it this way. Vitamin D not only helps you absorb calcium, but about a third of your phosphorus absorption depends on vitamin D, and phosphorus is the, one of the building blocks that you absorb from protein ingestion. So vitamin D is enhancing your ability to assimilate protein as well. So you can see, everywhere you mm -hmm. look, there's a connection. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and it's all reflected in what we see when you look in the animal world uh, of why, why animals, what, what their diets are like and their activity levels are like, and it all has a purpose, um, and it all is, is there for a reason. And, and when you explore the vitamin D picture the same way, you see how it's tied to so many mm -hmm. different things.